ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسالون به ولا ارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الدنيا الدنيا means the lowest it is from the things which is considered to be low lowly and also in position it is low the lowest the paradise has eternal bliss happiness and the hellfire has eternal torment and punishment but the dunya this dunya it is from the lowest and it is a place where we will be tested we will be tried we will face tribulations we will be tested to see what we will do to see what actions and what speech we will put forth and the hereafter is where we will reap our rewards and those who put forth good praise Allah and those who find nothing but torment and punishment blame no one but yourself and the reality of this dunya is as Allah mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran in Surah Al-An'am and the life of this world is nothing but play and amusement but far better is the house in the hereafter for those who are al muttaqun will you not then understand god and the life of this world is nothing but only play and amusement but far better is the house in the hereafter for those who are al muttaqun Will you not then understand and remember we just came out of the month of Ramadan and that month is a month for us to strive to be from amongst al-muttaqun so this dunya is only filled with play and amusement this world this worldly life and another ayat Allah mentions know that the life of this world is only play and amusement pump and mutual boasting amongst you and rivalry in respect of wealth and children as the likeness of vegetation after rain thereof the growth is pleasing to the tiller afterwards it dries up and you see it turning yellow then it becomes straw but in the hereafter there is its severe torment for the disbelievers the evil doers and there is forgiveness from Allah and his good pleasure for the believers the good doers whereas the life of this world is only a deceiving enjoyment so again Allah mentions 
And many times in the Quran he mentioned that this world is play and amusement. This world, it has a deceiving enjoyment for a very short period of time. For as believers, we believe in the hereafter. If you do not believe in the paradise and the hellfire, then you are not from amongst the Muslims. We believe in the hereafter. We believe that the day of judgment alone is 50,000 years. 50,000 years. This life, if we live to see 100, 200, alhamdulillah. But some of us will only live to see 60, 40, some of the young men 30. If we live to see and draw our pension in Trinidad, alhamdulillah. But this world is for a short period of time. And we should make good use of this temporary stay here so that we can sacrifice this life for a better life in the hereafter. And Allah also mentioned that this world is full of pomp and the glitz and the glam and mutual boasting. And when you, you ask men, well, what you do for a living? Some people, they have a nice job, so they might be working government or wasa or tea and tech. They have a nice income. That is like a, 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 a boasting for them. You ask a man, how many children you have? I am a, a brother in China time, you are 21. The next one say you are 18. Right? Some people have a lot of children. And this is from the, 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 the mutual boasting that sometimes we find ourselves in. We brag about how many children we have. And this is just a little side note here. It is not about the quantity, but it is about the quality. Because you have some women, they make a lot of children, but their children are set up pests. A set up pests they make it. Make sure and bring forth quality in the world. This will benefit you in the hereafter. But this world is full of boasting and pomp and the glitz and the glam and mutual boasting. And how, how many wives do you have, Aki? I have four. Actually, I'm looking for the next one to fill it up. We, 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 we have the, 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 the eagerness to gain this dunya. But remember, this dunya is full of play and amusement. It is a deceitful enjoyment for a period of time. Also, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took hold of the shoulder of Abdullah ibn Umar and said, be in this world as if you were a stranger or a traveler. And one of the sub-narrators, he mentioned that Ibn Umar, Abdullah Ibn Umar used to say, if you survive till the evening, do not expect to be alive in the morning. And if you survive till the morning, do not expect to be alive in the evening. And take from your health for your sickness and take from your life for your death. So again, this world, it is temporary. And if you live to see the morning, do not expect to live to see the evening. And if you do happen to live to see the evening, do not expect to live to see the morning. And if I remember correctly, one of the Salaf mentioned that if you are taking a sip of water, do not expect to live until you put down that glass, meaning that you can die before you put down that glass. And this is the reality. Sometimes death comes suddenly and swiftly to some people. Sometimes people ail for months and for years and then death takes them. But sometimes death comes swiftly. Also, this dunya is where we will be tested. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that when Allah created 
the paradise and the hell, he sent Jibreel alayhi salam to look at it. He sent him to look at the paradise. So Allah said, look at it and what I have prepared for its people. Jibreel alayhi salam looked at it and then he came back and said, by your glory, no one will hear of it, but he will enter. Meaning that he will do anything to enter into the paradise. Then Allah commanded that it be surrounded by hardships. So when Allah created the paradise, he sent Jibreel alayhi salam to go and look at it. And Jibreel alayhi salam went and he looked at it. And due to its beauty, he mentioned that whoever hears about it will do anything to attain it. And then Allah commanded hardship to be surrounded, to surround the paradise. And then he told him, go and look at it again. And then Jibreel Ali, Ali Salam went and he looked at it and he mentioned that who, verily, it is hard for them to enter into it due to the hardship that is placed around it. It is difficult to enter. And when Allah created the hellfire, he sent the, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam to look at it. And he went and he looked at it and then he came and he said, by your glory, they will do anything to escape it. They will do anything to prevent themselves from entering into it. And then Allah commanded that beautification and desires surround the hellfire. And then he told him, go and look at it again. And then when Jibreel alayhi salam went and looked at the hellfire, and he saw the beautification and the desires surrounding it, he mentioned that verily, none of them will be able to escape it. Very few will be able to escape it. Because why? The paradise, there is a lot of hardship surrounding it. And the hellfire, there is a lot of beautification surrounding it. And this has to do with the dunya. We face a lot of hardship in this dunya. And we also face our desires that encourage us to go towards evil, the beautification of sin and transgression, the beautification of evil, the pomp and the glitter and the glam and the play and the muse, amusement of this dunya. This is what deceives us and makes people enter into the hellfire. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd. So again this dunya, there is a lot of hardships with it. And also there is a lot of beautification and amusement, play and enjoyment at this, for a, a short moment, a deceitful play and amusement, a short period of time. So when it is time for us to leave off our jobs and our business and our family to attend the Juma or even attend the Salah in congregation, it is a hardship. And when it is time for us to pay the Zakat and give charity and to give from our wealth, it is a hardship. But remember, the paradise is surrounded by hardship. But when it is time for us to enjoy the dunya and we go and we play football from in the evening till the late hours of the night and sometimes you mission the, the Maghrib Salah 
and he messing the Isha Salah and he sweat until the morning that know that you are following your desires and the beautification surrounding the hellfire. When you follow your desires and you choose to run down these women who don't value marriage and you want to have sex outside of marriage and you want to taste all the different fruits before marriage this play and amusement this temporary enjoyment know that these are the things that surround the hellfire and you enjoy it in the dunya understand that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the, the 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 worthlessness of this dunya he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was with some of the sahaba in Dhul Hulaifa and they, show, they saw a dead sheep lifting its leg the sheep was dead sometimes like when you're driving down the highway or the main road and you see a dead dog or cat or an animal and it starts to swell this is what they mean they saw a sheep a dead sheep and it was lifting its leg because it was swelling it was bloating from the decayment inside and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't you think this is worthless to its owner meaning that this animal that is dead and decaying and lifting up its leg because it is bloating ready to burst from the decayment within don't you think that this is worthless to its owner and then he mentioned by the one in whose hand is my soul this world i remember this world belongs to allah this world is more worthless to allah than this dead sheep is to its owner if this world was worth the wing of a mosquito to Allah the disbeliever would not have a drop to drink from it so here this sheep this dead animal that we see on the side of the road is worthless to its owner some people love their pets and probably a dog may run away from its surrounding and it may get bounced down and die or a sheep may get bitten from some critter and it may die and then it starts to decay the owner does not want any part of this animal anymore to the owner he would just leave it there some people may have the common courtesy to bury the animal some people just leave the dead animal there it is worthless to them they know it cannot come back there is no worth in it so too Allah is the one who created this dunya and he owns it and he's the originator of affairs and this dunya this world it is worthless to Allah and if this world had any meaning or value to Allah the disbeliever would not be able to even take a sip of water the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also reported as saying Adunya sijnul mukmin wa jannatul kafir. The dunya is a prison for the believer and it is a paradise for the disbeliever. You find the disbelievers making effort endlessly in this dunya and they don't want to leave it because this is like a paradise to them if we as believers know the value of the hereafter the paradise and we enter the paradise we do not want to leave it because there is nothing better than that so this dunya the disbelievers they try their best not to leave this dunya 
They try to take part in all kind of healthy programs, do all kind of things to live a long life, take all kind of different tablets. They do everything within their ability not to leave this dunya. The believer, and it is not an encouragement to seek, to seek suicide, and to go and commit suicide so that now you could go and face the year after because verily you will face torment and punishment for committing suicide. You wait until Allah sends death for you. And you try your utmost best to live according to Islam. This dunya is a prison for us. We are held back in this dunya. The paradise is where we will be able to let loose. The paradise is where we will have endless enjoyments. The paradise is where we will see the face of Allah. This dunya, we will not be able to see the face of Allah. Also, again, this dunya is temporary. And it is where we will be tested. I urge you to put forth good deeds, put forth righteous actions. And righteous actions are those that are sincere for Allah and upon the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the understanding of the salaf. Righteous actions are not just how you feel to do as you please. And fear Allah and stay away, stay far away from his prohibitions. We are prohibited from fornication and adultery. We are prohibited from intoxications and all that entails alcohol and weed and all the drugs that befogs your mind. We are prohibited from abandoning the salah, the prayer. We are prohibited from worshiping anything besides Allah. We are prohibited from following the, the, the evils of this world. Again, brothers, put forth good deeds. This world, this life is temporary. Put forth good deeds so you can reap the benefits in the hereafter. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina dhabina. May Allah grant us the good of this world and the good of the hereafter. And may Allah protect us from the evil and the punishment and the torment and his anger in the hereafter. Subhanakallah huwa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ilanta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa akimu salam.